A fault line runs through the U.S. state of California, which could soon trigger a massive disaster. Researchers are certain that the next big earthquake in the region will cause devastation of never-before-seen proportions. Why do people in the area continue to act as if the danger doesn't exist, despite alarming signs? And what damages can truly be expected in a serious case? Stay tuned as we investigate these intriguing questions now. Deadly Fissure in the Earth The San Andreas Fault extends over a length of about 810 miles along the west coast of California. It begins in the north at the coast of Mendocino County and runs south along the California Coastal Range. The fault largely parallels the Pacific Coast and ends in the south near the Salton Sea in Imperial County. The fault was formed about 30 million years ago due to a peculiarity in the configuration of the continental plates. When people in the area began to settle, the fault was already known. Nevertheless, the massive crack in the earth did not deter people from founding metropolises such as San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Jose, Sacramento, and Palm Springs. All these cities are located directly on the fault or within its immediate catchment area. At the beginning of settlement construction, no one in this area properly understood the geological peculiarity. The area is attractive, the proximity to the Pacific is enticing, and not least of all, it was the beginning of the California Gold Rush that lured thousands and eventually millions of people to the area from 1848 onwards. Although the region has undoubtedly been hit by devastating earthquakes several times in the past, the fault can be deceptive. Depending on the epoch, dozens or hundreds of years pass between the devastating earthquakes. In the meantime, the fault in the ground disappears almost completely in places due to erosion. What remains is a small dent in the ground, which to non-experts can seem like a harmless sign of dryness or a dried up stream bed. If the fault reopens due to geological activities, a gap can open up within a few seconds that in places forms a several hundred feet or even miles deep fissure. This event would be accompanied by devastating earthquakes. A Geological Peculiarity The San Andreas Fault is not a single straight line in its course. It consists of various sections that are located in different geological regions. All these sections have different characteristics and show different degrees of seismic activity. Strictly speaking, the Earth in this area never rests completely. Seismic observations show that the region is the most geologically active in the entire United States. Earthquakes along the fault have already caused significant damage in the past, and scientists and seismologists warn that the next disaster may only be a matter of time. One may wonder why millions of people live in this area and live every day with the danger and fear. California residents are in constant tension. Experts suspect that living on a geological powder keg gives the residents of the area constant stress. Yet, most people are too established in this area to simply give up their home. It seems impossible to evacuate metropolises like San Francisco or San Diego. In the catchment area of the fault, lie two of the country's most glamorous cities, and both are at risk of being permanently wiped out at any moment. Current measurements show far more than just the dawning of a terrible earthquake. Signs indicate that the fault could soon break apart entirely. That would mean that the coastal areas of California could slide miles out to sea. For some coastal cities, this would mean immediate extinction. Metropolises would be swallowed up by the earth with a jolt, and the people would be lost unless they are warned in time. However, this is precisely where the further danger of the fault lies, because the early warning systems are unreliable. Uncertainty is omnipresent. The San Andreas Fault is more than just a tension zone between two tectonic plates. This geological anomaly is a massive fracture line in the Earth's crust. The fault extends from the northern end of the Gulf of California to Western California. It then continues towards the Pacific Ocean, in the area of San Francisco, where it dips beneath the ocean surface. The entire area to the left of the fault would be instantaneously drawn into the massive gap in the event of a rupture. The regions to the right of the fault could shift over the areas to the left that have dropped miles. Whole metropolises would simply sink and disappear. In particular, 
The regions at the foot of the San Andreas Fault are at risk, as a complete rupture is becoming ever more likely here. Even now, the tectonic movements periodically cause earthquakes. However, the worst disasters of the past are now seen by researchers only as warnings for what is inevitable. In 1906, a devastating earthquake laid much of San Francisco to rubble and ash. But the people, unknowingly, rebuilt the city. Since then, a lot has changed. The area has been geologically studied. The fault, its significance, and the danger it poses have been closely scrutinized by scientists. The warnings and awareness of the likelihood of further disasters have been present in people's minds ever since. However, at the times when the danger became known, it was already unthinkable to simply give up the flourishing settlement areas and large Pacific ports. For a long time, the fault was quiet, but in 1989, the earth shook again in a threatening way. The quake was overall somewhat milder than that of 1906, and again people lulled themselves into safety. Five years later, an even stronger and more destructive earthquake occurred in Northridge, a suburb of Los Angeles. Northridge is located on one of the larger secondary fault lines of the San Andreas Fault, while the Million People City and Film Metropolis Los Angeles is just 31 miles east of the main fault line and therefore directly in the danger zone. The disasters and minor earthquakes of the past have shown that the tremors do not always strike cities built directly on the fault. Communities such as Point Reyes, Fraser Park, Daly City, Desert Hot Springs, Gorman, San Bernardino, Wrightwood, Palmdale, and Bodega Bay are considered particularly at risk, but earthquakes and increased seismic activity have also been measured 31 and even more miles away. How likely is the disaster? At a recent National Earthquake Conference, the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, Thomas Jordan, made a worrying announcement to the public. Jordan stated that the San Andreas Fault is in a very critical state and people must be prepared for a major earthquake at any time. NASA's measurements with satellites from space have shown that, in particular, the section of the fault in Southern California could give way at any time. This warning led to increased alertness among California's residents. But then, people are also again forced to go back to their normal lives. The people in California live constantly with the risk and fear, like all the people who have decided to build their homes and cities in risk areas or at the foot of active volcanoes. On the Canary Island of La Palma, people had to face the unpleasant truth in 2021. After over 50 years, the Cumbre Vieja had erupted again. Ash rain transformed the landscape into a burning desert and lava flows inexorably made their way into the Atlantic. Dozens of houses were lost, plantations burned, and people as well as animals were in distress. Even luxury villas had to be abandoned by their residents from one moment to the next. Compared to the disaster that could be impending in California, the people on La Palma got off relatively well. Although the eruption came surprisingly, the evacuation worked flawlessly and safely. The island is a popular destination for vacationers and is also well inhabited, but it's rather sparsely populated compared to California. However, La Palma must also be a warning as all early warning systems have failed. Scientists don't like to admit it, but the capabilities of seismological monitoring of the Earth and global early warning systems are anything but reliable. Almost none of the major volcanic eruptions or earthquakes that occurred in the last 20 to 50 years were predictable. When a magnitude 7.0 earthquake devastated the Caribbean island of Haiti in 2010, no one was warned in advance. 230,000 people died completely unexpectedly. On March 11, 2011, the Tohoku earthquake in Japan took people by surprise, and the subsequent tsunami led to one of the biggest nuclear disasters of all time. In 2015, the Himalaya nation of Nepal shook as if out of nowhere. The 7.8 magnitude earthquake caused devastating damage, and thousands of people lost their lives. The last earthquake that triggered a global shock was on September 28th, the earthquake of the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. The tremor, with a magnitude of 7.5 on the Richter scale, additionally triggered a tsunami that killed over 4,300 people. The Southeast Asia region had already been hit by the largest tsunami of our time in 2004. The monstrous wave killed 230,000 people shortly after Christmas, many of whom were vacationing in warm climates. When the horror rolled in from one second to the next, 
So, it would be a fatal mistake to rely on early warning systems or to feel safe in the case of the San Andreas Fault. The Silence Before the Catastrophe The last time a large section of the San Andreas Fault broke off in the southern regions, the catastrophe was accompanied by an earthquake of magnitude 7.9. In 1857, a stretch of about 186 miles between Monterey County and the San Gabriel Mountains near Los Angeles was destroyed. According to Thomas Jordan, the fault was quiet in the days before the event. Too quiet. He commented that continuous seismic activity within certain parameters is reassuring. The Earth signals in this way that it's carrying on with its daily work. Then, when a sudden silence occurs, it can indicate an impending catastrophe. In 1857, settlers and gold prospectors reported an odd silence that had spread across the land shortly before the quake came. Protection for Millions of People In the entire region, people have been preparing as best they can for a potential catastrophe for years. Buildings are constructed according to the latest findings in earthquake safety. Roads and bridges are flexibly designed and are expected to withstand shocks up to magnitudes of 8.0 on the Richter scale. Based on the data of modernizations and earthquake safety, the Los Angeles Regional Administration has issued an estimate. According to these numbers, the government anticipates up to 50,000 seriously injured people, $200 billion in property damage, and severe disruptions to public order lasting for days in the event of an earthquake disaster. The mayor of the celebrity metropolis predicted that 1,500 people would have to anticipate death in a serious case. For far less optimistic experts, such representations appear to be a farce. If the San Andreas Fault breaks apart, hundreds of thousands of people could lose their lives, and some of California's most glamorous cities and communities would be lost forever. Now tell us, could you live in such a region? And do you believe that local people dramatically underestimate the danger?